to the Clear Tai Chi Mastermind Meeting for podcast for Friday, May 6th of 2022. And with us today is myself, Richard Cleary, resident host, Matt Holker, the regional organizer for Maribel, Tennessee, outside of Knoxville. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Sheila Bell in Costa Rica. She's going to tell you what parts. Hi, everybody. I'm in Guanacaste, which is the northern Pacific region of Costa Rica. And I have classes in Liberia and Playa del Coco. Welcome. Thank you. Art Don in the Washington, D.C. area. Hello, everyone. I'm in Greenbelt, Maryland. That is about 12 miles east of Washington, D.C. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Harry Legg in Verona, New Jersey, outside of New York City. Hi there, Sifu. Thank you very much. Uh, the school is New Jersey Tai Chi. I uh, also have an instructor in Fairlawn, New Jersey, Paul Shansky. Great to be here. Thank Welcome. you. Bill Chan in Columbus, Georgia. Hello. Hello. Mark Mashad in Michigan. He's going to tell you what parts. Hi, it's the uh, Midwest Michigan area covering Grand Rapids and Lansing area. Welcome. Jared Blake Smith in Cleveland, Ohio. Hello, hello. I'm uh, just west side of Cleveland, uh, mostly in Lakewood and Berea. Ty Talbert, currently in Austin, Texas. Hey, y'all. No, I'm in San Antonio, Texas. In San Antonio, Texas. Okay, I hear sorry. a hey, y'all. <laughs> you haven't Jim, been here that long. Jim hey. Kelly in Boca Raton, Florida. That's right, Boca Raton. More importantly, you can visit us at uh, West Boca Tai Chi on the World Wide Web Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Jared's topic here is about Dantian work. And tell us a little bit about um, like the kinds of things that you're looking at with the Dantian and about the Dantian and um, you know what you're looking to show or, or get into with it for the class and that kind of stuff. Give us some kind of an idea of what where you're coming from with it. Um, so I've noticed that a uh, Chen kind of uh, Chen style. So that's uh, the, uh, if anyone doesn't know already, um, Chen style is kind of like the bulk of my training so far in Tai Chi, um, and I, I, I participate and use the clear Tai Chi to develop the internal skills quite a bit, and I think the two go to go together very well. I have noticed that Chen really focuses on the mechanics relating to the legs and the lower dantian um, and to the point where there are entire exercises and entire training uh, curricula to just knowing how to move the lower dantian and how to react with the lower dantian how to develop power with the lower body and stuff like that um, i need a moment to pull up my email with that the, with the notes yep, yep. I thought we were going to do this next week <laughs> I'm sorry uh, I put it on one page I probably should have sent you the one page so that you could print it or, or bring it up like that I can I can so um I got I got the notes now um so a lot of times uh, I've noticed that even when I talk to um, some people who've learned a little bit about uh, Tai Chi, they don't know a lot about the, any of the Dantians, much less any specific one. And so just kind of as a basic for people who don't know already, like maybe the folks at home. Uh, so lower, uh, so the Dantian is roughly, it comes out of a uh, Taoist alchemy practices. And the, the word Dantian roughly translate as elixir field. The idea being is that this is where the Taoist would be collecting his or her energies to use for a, an internal transformation process to make themselves into a, a more spiritual, refined person. The physically speaking, the lower Dantian is. Uh, I've noticed that there, there's a couple different definitions, like as far as like its location, the lower Dantian, 
for acupressure, acupuncture. It's a, a spot kind of right below the navel by about an inch or two. Um, it corresponds to the L4, L5 area on the back, also known as the Mingmen. But I've also noticed that in um, the, tr the Chen tradition I train with, uh, he, he considers the lower Dantian everything from the solar plexus to the perineum. So kind of all of the squishy lower part of the body area. Yep. And the way he trains it is it's, he wants to develop agility with that whole area so that it can uh, go in and out. It can roll in different directions. There's uh, three different axes that he tries to get it to roll in. And uh, it, it creates the ability for him to respond to someone pushing or someone fighting him as well as it gives him uh, a lot of options for generating power. Cool. So, and then I'm pretty sure we all know, but just for folks at home, the middle Dantian, so I mentioned lower Dantian, so there's middle and upper. So the middle Dantian is kind of like the, the rib cage area and the upper Dantian is gonna be kind of like our brain case or our, you know, the upper slash middle part of our head. Um, so what I was going to be showing at the gathering is going to be along the lines of showing some of these uh, methods that Chen likes to develop mobility in the lower Dantian, how the legs help like, you know, work into it, how the rest of the body responds to movement of the lower Dantian, uh, some of the power generation, um, the, the specific exercise I was going to show kind of uh, will go into kind of a, it's kind of universal, but I see it a lot more in Chen, how to do some of the Chen and how to do some of the neutralization. And there's a nice exercise in the form uh, that uh, if, if anyone's seen any of the Chen forms, they'll kind of recognize it's the, uh, the six ceiling for closing. And so I think that'll be kind of neat for people to put, to play with. And um, so with, with that, I was going to ask some questions to the group, which is how much do, does anyone, like in our training, how much do you use your lower Dantian? And uh, even maybe uh, how do you, like what do you use it for maybe? Mm -hmm. I was going to kind of just kind of put that to the group. Yep. And before you put that out there, so Chen Sao's Tai Chi Chuan starts with lower Dantian training for beginners as a core teaching method to help develop, develop these level skills connected to the rest of the body. And then middle Dantian and upper Dantian, this is your notes that I'm kind of reading from there, but middle mm -hmm. Dantian and upper Dantian are more advanced and tend to be much higher up in the curriculum and may not, often is not present at all in the publicly available training. Um, the, uh, and also you've got here that the Ming men translate in Chinese translates as a uh, life gate. Oh yeah. The life gate. Yep. Was there so, anything about why they go, go ahead. So the idea of why it's called a life gate is so when we're working on the circulation of energy through the body, one of the, uh, very common exercises that, uh, Taoist alchemy will kind of present is what's called this microcosmic orbit. It's where energy circles kind of creates like a circle, almost like a water wheel through the body that goes up the spine, down the front, along, you know, our line of symmetry. And the, the life gate, it tends to be called that because I've noticed that when this kind of goes to structure a little bit, when we don't have good structure, it tends to, like, and especially in our lumbar vertebrae, it blocks the energy from properly propagating up through the spine or even going down with our nervous system. Our ner you know, so legs can get, you know, we have a pinched nerve, it's going to often be in the lumbar area. Um, so even our nervous system, it cannot properly propagate unless we have that life gate area, the lumbar relaxed and not pinch, you know, it's, it's gotta be just open. 
just open the spaces between them and it's gotta be agile. Mm -hmm. I've even noticed that some students of mine have, uh, they start developing just being able to open the back and they can cure themselves of neuropathy, like in their feet. And it's just good circulation. The, 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 it, it needs to get in there and it could be the chi, it could be our blood and our liquids, and it could be our nervous system opening that. So the life gate, it's, it's kind of almost an apt name. Your life is improved if you can just keep that open or open more times than not. Cool. Yeah, what I found is that all four main Tai Chi styles there and then the derivatives have different ways that they go about connecting upper body to lower body. They all involve getting that, that Ming Men open and properly aligned and not, not uh, blocked by bad posture or inappropriate posture some way. And they each do it differently, but they all do it. And clear Tai Chi, we've got a couple specific couple. We actually use kind of a little bit of a combination of several of them um, and aspects to get it going on there. The uh, anyway, so that's and then when if you think about that from the way he's talking about it, it's that we are using the lower dantian in some specific ways, starting with the releasing, relaxing, and the alignment. So if you were going, well, I don't know that I've done anything with Dantian. You have, you may not have been thinking about it that way. I'm talking to everybody else on the call. Sorry. Okay. So Jared, go ahead and pick it up from there. And you were saying how do they move or use their lower Dantian and going into that line of question. Right. So um, <clears throat> the, the question to the group is how do you use your lower Dantian in your practice? Or if you do uh, any healing work, how do you, you know, how do you incorporate the lower Dantian into that? And I'm just going to go across the screen. So Sheila, you're at the top. <laughs> yeah, it's great, great topics, very interesting. So um, I had heard a lot about the lower Dantian and I would kind of, you know, feel for it in a specific place. And I had some sense of it, but not a lot. And then I mentioned that to Sipu Clear once and he said, well, what about the Ming Men? So the first thing when you uh, mentioned the, the lower Dantian that you added in the Meng Men as part of, so it's like a larger concept than what I originally had in mind. Um, so yes, if we're including that, that whole region, right, with the Meng Men and everything, um, I use the Meng Men constantly in order to uh, correct my alignment, right? And uh, you feel, if you're leading with the whole body, that that's sort of the, the, the rudder, right? That's the, the ship's captain wheel. That's how you're gonna make that movement be whole body. Um, so yeah, I use it all the time. And I had two points that I was gonna make, let me think. Nope. It's gone. <laughs> no, that's okay. That actually brings to mind, I've heard that uh, the Ming Men is kind of where the Dantian, it, kind of connects to the spine. And so it's kind of this whole orb, so to speak, you know, it's a sphere in the body or this, you know, this region, this three dimensional region and the acupressure point, that's where it connects to the front meridian and the Ming Men is where it connects to the back meridian. Yeah. Right? So, and that, that triggered my memory that what I was going to say, as far as the healing aspect. So I have a high hernia and I do some breathing exercises in order to settle everything in the right place, right? And so then if I incorporate lower down Tian into that breathing exercise, I feel like I'm not just dealing with my little hiatal hernia, which is, you know, it feels significant because I'm aware of it. But if you bring it down deeper into the whole down Tian as you're doing your breathing exercise, you're actually massaging all the organs, right? And so then everything's gonna work better. So what you're talking about with just fixing lower back pain, but it's actually the functioning of all the organs, right? Mm -hmm because it's a soft part of our body, it doesn't necessarily get the same kind of attention as, you know, if you're lifting weights or something, if you're going jogging or whatever, those are more the skeletal muscular, you know, uh, areas. But with the organs, um, I think that it's, it's a good way to get in there and, and really make sure your body's functioning to its best uh, ability. Absolutely. I think the same, I, I found the same thing that uh, breathing uh, down into the belly, trying to get the breath to the Dantian, the physical trying to do that, the diaphragm, it helps kind of 
create a pump through the lower abdomen. And it kind of helps to massage, do that massage of the organs kind of thing we try to do in some of our Qigong and Tai Chi. All right, thank you. You're welcome. All right, Art, you're next. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I got it, thanks. Um, I, um, I'm not sure I'd say I actively use the Dantian a lot, but I have it as a, a focal point generally of my, my practice for gathering my breath, um, unless I'm doing some other particular um, practice or exercise that focuses on a different Dantian or, um, well, yeah, area, the, the third eye or, or, or the heart thymus. Um, but I, I, I breathe into it. And again, I get the massage effect of my all my organs. And um, I noticed after practicing for a while, just maybe even in the last few years, that I would feel occasionally the, the Dantian, and again, sort of the whole area of, of the abdomen, I, I feel it. Um, so maybe it's extending more, but um, an, an opening at, at the bottom down to my um, pelvic shelf, or I forget, or perineum area, um, mm -hmm. I, I guess, um, down to the to bottom of my, my torso, or abdomen, whatever. Um, there was another opening that, um, or, or a widening perhaps, where it gave me a feeling of sort of more fullness. And then as I brought the breath in, just to sort of help increase the substantialness of the abdominal area. And then from that, just throughout my body. Um, and at first it was an occasional feeling of, of this opening, but now with more consistent practice and paying attention to it, I feel my whole abdominal area open more to, um, well, expanding more um, with, with the breath. And it just seems to increase, well, my, my breath and, and energy flow throughout my body. Um, so- Connected power. <clears throat> right, okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, and I, um, as I say, keep in particular mind Dantian breathing through a regular practice, but um, I've been doing it for, for a while and it's just sort of the natural process for me that I don't have to um, think really about where I'm breathing or how I'm breathing unless I want to expand it particularly more or take in a, a deeper breath for, for some reason, or just feel the whole area expanding. Um, but then uh, developing from the Dantian area and, and using that, if after a, a, a good practice or winding down from a practice, I'll, um, with the concentration of chi, I will sort of, as I, as I calm and, and relax more and more, feel the chi actually going into the marrow, sort of, sort of spreading out. Um, so it's maybe stored more, for, I, I consider sort of a, a deeper storage maybe, not just right um, mm -hmm. av available open. Um, so that's um, more or less how I keep in mind or work with the Dantian in, in my practice and throughout the day. Actually, uh, I, I like that what, what you said about as you practice, you became more and more aware of not only the, the presence of your Dantian, but how much it assisted with you know, gathering your energy and helping you feel better. Um, I think that's very much uh, that echoes my early training too. Is I would hear my teacher, who is just a you know kind of a guy in town, and uh, this is before um, I really started taking my training much more seriously. He would say like, "Oh, you just want to move the dance." And it wasn't until someone gave me a couple exercises to really feel 
something very specific that I started noticing. Was, and I, I think some students, uh, they kind of only have a very vague idea of what we're talking about sometimes when we say Dantian, unless or until we kind of like, no, this point right here, you want to feel it expanding, you want to feel it moving this way and that way. You want to feel your energy coming from there and coming back to there. And that's what your lesson is going to be at the gathering, correct? Is about that, those, those things. Partially. I was thinking, so the, the main thing I was going to look at is showing how the Dantian, the, the movement, the Chen movement is about how I can accept energy at the same time. Uh, so I'm, I'm being uh, Chinad as yeah. and neutralizing that while Chinaing my partner at the exact same moment. So I'm using some and I'm accepting some. Yeah, good deal. Right All right. So thank you, Don. Thank you, Art. Um, thank you. The next person on here, I'm sorry, I don't know your name, but it says stress everywhere. Phil. You, <laughs> Phil okay, I'm sorry. I apologize. Phil, what what do, what do you think about how do you, how do you use your Dantian in your practice? Your lower so Dantian. So certainly one of the core things we learn in Theta Tai Chi, one of the early skills, uh, is bone marrow washing. And so we move energy into the Dan Tian from, we, we, we move both uh, universal energy and also earth energy through our body, and then it mixes in the lower Dan Tian, and then it exits down the leg. So that's a, a real core practice. It's something that's uh, taught in the very beginning of most seminars, yep. um, and I know that it's I know that it's useful because when when Sifu's employees are tired because he's kept them up at night during the workshops, <laughs> his employers are on the ground are lying on the ground with the legs crossed the way it's supposed to be, and they're doing bone marrow washing. So if that's not a testament that it works <laughs> nothing is <laughs> never happens i don't know what he's talking about <laughs> <laughs> and then i would guess uh what i was talking about relaxing and releasing a lot of what happens with that is adjusting the, the lower back which is a lot of for a lot of people the lower back tends to be lifted rather than tilted and relaxing and releasing gets that into alignment it gets the dantian and into the proper relationship so it's it's relatively easy to move energy wherever you want to within your body you can move it down below your body you can use it to root and then if you want to move it above your body you can also absolutely so i just to kind of paraphrase you find that it's uh most present to you the lower dantian during your self-healing kind of work um I would just say that bone marrow, I would just, I would say bone marrow washing is just sort of a big part of the practice for many of us. And, and it's something that I do. And, and, that, and so it's yeah. an everyday thing, even longer term. And the lower Dantan is ob obviously a very focal part of that process. Oh, yeah. oh, great. Thank you. All right. Next on the screen, Harry. Thanks, Jared. Um, so uh, putting things uh, along the lines as you did and Sheila did, including the Ming men in that area, um, the Sea of Qi, um, I have had some, st I haven't had to do it personally myself, although I, I did try uh, briefly to see what it was like. Um, I've had students that would overheat uh, doing their Qigong um, with me. Uh, it doesn't happen a lot, but a couple. Um, and usually when they're new students, um, so I, you, I have them put their mind in the Ming men, open that up and direct the heat, uh, out the Ming men and it, it works and it relieves that. So I've instructed people to use it for that with success. Um, uh, another thing that I'll use the, the lower Dantian for, uh, and I don't do this a lot, but once in a while it is in the bag of, uh, abilities or skills is in push hands. And I won't just do it necessarily with the lower Dantian. It could be any one of them or all of them. Uh, I will project it into the person to aid with moving them. So that is one of the other uses <laughs> that I have found. Uh, again, I don't do it too much because it's not necessarily the nicest thing to do, but uh, you want to be able to do it. So. <laughs>
Yeah, I, I know what you mean, uh, especially with the push hands. Like sometimes you project it uh, even just very physically too fast. It can it could really, you know, hurt someone's wrist or their, you know, their arm. And so like there's a lot of muscle tissue there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, thank you. Right. That was very interesting about the uh, how, using the Ming men to help uh, help students cool down. Uh, I find that a very interesting. I myself, I try to use uh, the idea of similarly, I have to make sure everything's in alignment and then I just let the, the heat kind of just go out of me or what's making me hot. Yeah, oh, well, cool. sure. Well, and I learned that from Sifu, of course. So yeah. <laughs> that's where that came from, yep. All right. All right, thank you. Yeah, there's a lot more on that topic. So if you're at home and you're hearing that, don't get too crazy, experiment with that. He gave you the very short version of that and there's a lot to know there to make that appropriately to, to utilize that where you really should probably be in front of an instructor yes all right uh ty ty you're on mute thank you jerry mm -hmm. everyone's brought up a lot of things and i agree with them but what i find is is that the Min Ming ends up being my focus almost right at the very beginning because I want to go ahead and have three Dan Chen linear. So that's the very first one. And then I go ahead and line up everything else around that. That way I have Zon Ding, that way I have the energy flowing, um, all those other sort of things come into line once I put my focus there and line up everything else in my body around my um, lower Dan Chen. And let me ask you this, Ty. For me, when I do that practice and the way I would normally teach it is to get the top one really first, right? Mm -hmm. And to get them, then they get the lower Dantian like that. And then you don't force the middle one. The middle one, you kind of get those other two with your mind on it to line up. Right. And then that lineup is happening. All these really cool and great, and nice and healthy and powerful things happen. Um, and you're saying that you kind of start more with the lower one and then go to the top one from there? So yes. Way around? Well, I, I start with the lower one for one reason is that I used to always have problems with getting my lower back in alignment where, you know, you're told to, uh, you know, to push your hips forward or, right. and do all these other sort of funky things that people taught me. And then I found that, okay, if I get that lower one correct, it puts my my posture correct, then I worry about the top one and of course the yep. middle one. Makes sense. Kind of let it yeah, because then if you're feeling the middle one first, I can tell when I felt for that. Then you can if you're like because of the way I'm sitting right now. Mm -hmm. Um any miss anything that's out of alignment, you immediately feel and make that adjustment. And then right. you go looking for the top and then bang, you click in. Okay. So when I start with the bottom Different one, approach. it helps my structure more than if I start with the top one. Yeah, I get that. If yeah. somebody's got a little the lower back shelf or where it's funky somehow, that's going to make a difference. Yeah, cool. Yes. Do you um, uh, think that that's valuable? Do you like when you when you teach someone else, having them correct their lower dantian and then go upward, for, or is that kind of like just your own practice? Um, actually, it's more sort of genetic. If you have one of those people. Um, that has an inclination to that lower back shelf, mm. uh, which a lot of African Americans are, then working it from the bottom works better. If you happen to be one of my Asian students, it doesn't That's make much. any difference. Yeah. I don't have to worry about it. Then I can work from the top down. Yes. So it okay. depends on the physical structure of the individual, whether or not they have any problems with getting the physical structure correct. If they have problems with that, then I start at the bottom. Yeah, I like it. That's good. Okay, right on. Thank you. All right, Mark, you are at the bottom of my screen here. So now it's your turn. <laughs> you know, with the lower Dantian, um, I have pretty much avoided it completely so far in Tai Chi. Any work with it? Um, a little bit with like three Don Tien's type stuff, linear. But uh, uh, in my prior martial arts experience, I put, a, they call it the Hara. It's kind of the same thing a little bit. You're kind of have center it, of balance. That too. What's that? 
I've experienced that too. I've, I, uh, I taught a person who went to an Akito school for a while. Uh -huh. and he always put it in uh, Japanese terminology. Ah, and so, um, so I put a lot of time into that for years and years and years. Um, the idea of keeping your mind on that point. And so if I was hitting somebody, I would put my mind on that point and then I would put my mind into their body like an inch and a half if I was going to hit them. And you in the power would be really, really off the charts good if you combine that with a couple other elements. Uh, same thing with throwing. I would use that a lot. That concept, you would hold that. It would make you very, if the other person is not doing that, makes it very difficult for them to move or throw you. And uh, it makes it way easier for you to throw them or take them down or just manhandle them down. Um, but what I found was because I wasn't doing, uh, I had injuries and I wasn't doing a good job with um, structure just because I hadn't really been informed about it. Um, I have, I have, you have like postural muscles and then you have like active muscles, like the big muscles that you work out with. Mm -hmm. I had these dysfunctions where like, even to this day, if I think about, if I visually, if I try to do visualization and do karate and even in my head, like do I'll do the form or the kata, all of the training where it's the, the, the Don, the lower Don Tien or Hara work along with um, the extreme fast muscular contraction to generate power along with the postural muscles that are, are uh, dead, not moving properly, along with the active muscles, which are firing all the time and shouldn't be, I end up feeling the muscles tighten and like I have dysfunctional muscles that are misfiring. And so <laughs> I've been avoiding that lower Don Tien work because if I even think about it, it, it all that stuff kind of uh, in my mind, it's entangled because I worked it all together for so long. I'm getting misfire sore where things are, are uh, my health deteriorates, the physical. We're going to say that a lightning hit didn't do you any favors on that. Yeah. And because uh, of where it went and, through. Yeah. <clears throat> so I, anyways, I, so I, I have avoided it until, until I get to a point where I can think about what I used to do and those muscles don't automatically go wrong. And then at some point I'll ask Sifu clear how to reintegrate Don Tien for the power thing back in. But, I'm leaving it alone till it, uh, but it, it, when I did it in the other stuff, it was just that concept alone was quite powerful for generating wow. power. Yeah, so you just fortified center as you were punching. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and it's interesting because Tai Chi, like like most karate styles, most like Xing Yi, if you know what Xing Yi is, they fortify center and then Tai Chi, it dissolves center. And so it's got a different thing going on there. Like the opposite. Yeah. yeah. It's keeping it nice and loose. Mm -hmm. Well, it's more than that. It's, it really goes to dissolving, it. but that's, that's, it begins towards the beginning in terms of being able to move it around and do things with it, but eventually it becomes dissolving and then it's very different after that. So it's, yeah, cool. All right, thank you, Mark. Matt? Yeah, Matt. Yeah, the, um, so yeah, so I have had the experience with the Shotokan karate and the, you know, those kinds of <laughs> modalities and um, and the, the, uh, the belt uh, that they, that you tie on in karate, the knot there is right on the hara and there's, uh, that is used as a mental device to kind of draw attention to that. And like Sifu said, they typically are fortifying that as they hit or defend or, or you know, are moving. Um, and there's, there's a kind of a mental and physical attention on that spot. Um, and it can be very powerful the way we, do things in clear Tai Chi or, or really the way Tai Chi thinks about things in general is a lot different, but that, but it recognizes that that place on the body is a very, very powerful spot. Um, and that there's a lot going on there, uh, but more the way that it tries to build that is through uh, relaxation and like mentally directed energy. Um, and filling and flowing energy through that as a pass through. And so, you know, the, the, the marrow washing was mentioned earlier. And so the marrow washing is a really primary way where we utilize 
that lower Van Tien in our, in our work where we're bringing in energy and we're directing it mentally to the lower Van Tien and then allowing the lower Van Tien to mix those energies together so that we can do the rest of the work with it. Um, and, the, and that lower Van Tien function as a mixer, as a, as a sort of a combiner or a transformer of energy is something that we utilize a lot in clear Tai Chi and in the healing work that we do. Um, and it's something that we build up much, much like the karate guys with their belts who are getting this kind of action on the Hara without real, without necessarily realizing what that's about yet. Um, you know, that it's just built into kind of the methodology. There's lower Dan Tien work that is built into our training that, um, you know, we do, we do make the education about it available, but people don't necessarily have to have that education to be doing the lower Dan Tien work. So. Uh, an example of this is hold the bowl. We have a, our, our hold the bowl qigong is typically done a bit lower. You'll notice then a lot of a lot hold lower. the bowl that you see, um, you know, a lot of hold the bowl is done kind of directly out in front of the chest or out in front of uh, second dantian, middle dantian. Middle dantian, I've seen it as high as throat or even uh, raising up towards just even slightly higher than that. Mm -hmm. And there's different ones in different positions, but our basic normal um, one that we that we prefer at least to start with is down right in front of the lower dantian, and it is designed to strengthen and charge the lower dantian. Now, if you're just doing the hold the bowl in that shape, the way that we teach people to do it, it's doing that for you. You may or may not realize it's doing that for you if you haven't been told that but it is doing that for you. And so there's, there's a bunch of, and there's other examples of that throughout the training where we really are utilizing the lower Dan Tien quite a bit. Um, it's just not necessarily being pointed out every time that that's what's going on, but it is happening. And it is a very important part of the development as a Chi, as a Tai Chi person. And especially in clear Tai Chi, there is, there is a certain kind of emphasis put on that very, very early on the, in the training and it continues all the way through. To the point where Sifu Clear was talking about, where where you're really working on actively kind of dissolving that energy from there out, and uh, and doing other things with that 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 become some of the more impressive high level like demonstrations of Tai Chi that you've seen or heard about. You want to be able to go from really very fortified to very 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 open to eventually dissolve. Really, that's the whole body of work in our system in Clear Tai Chi. It's going to be like that. It is like that. I'm saying going to be if you haven't trained it before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the other thing I would add is that um, when we do our three powers, and ideally for most people in Tai Chi, because three powers is one of those things that all the styles kind of have, it's that you've got the heaven energy or heaven, that, that quality from up top. You've got the yang energy. Uh, or the or, or depending on what you're calling yin and yang. So I'm going to use it that way. The heaven energy, the earth energy, they mix in you. This is the three powers. And they mix in you at lower Dantian level and become, and those two energies mixing then become human being energy um, so that then you have the use for that. And then lower Dantian, that full area, that's where that mix and it wastes the qua, um, you know, for the whole area where the lower Dantian occupies, that's where that mixing occurs. I will also really quickly, for those of you who do study Clear Tai Chi, for those of you who have uh, our basic skills program or our Clear Tai Chi level one material, um, I, I challenge you to uh, think about the pendulum swinging exercise uh -huh. and think about where that pendulum is attached to you inside and how it's attached Because yeah, I've got it around your waist. Right. But where do you really feel it? But where do you really feel it? And, uh, and think about that. And, and now that that has been pointed out to you, um, you know, try that again and, and think about it and see if that doesn't enhance the feel of that and the, and the results that you get out of it. Excellent. All right. Jared, I, I, I would like to mention something, Jared. Um, one of the things that, uh, that Sifu teaches that's different than most people teach is that uh, Sifu sees the lower Dan Tien as a place to mix, but not as a place to store. 
Yeah. You've got a little yeah. bit of residual that stores there, but it's, but it's not this big giant storage place because it's not a big giant storage place. It's, it's smaller than that. And you want it in your bone marrow, not in your lower dentine. And then your lower dentine is an access point in and out from bone marrow chi to ying chi, which is blood, then to meridian level chi, which is like fascia, than the way to you on the outside and your your the biggest facilitators on that are throat upper dantian middle dantian throat and then lower dantian in and out and this, these are these gateways to do that yeah there's a bunch more on that uh, in that vein in the healing material and in the fog on programs that we have um but so phil was there more that you wanted to elaborate on or say about that or about or ask. No, I just wanted to point, you know, because most most systems talk about the lower Dantian as the major storage place. Yeah. Right. And, and well, and, well, I will say most systems publicly yeah. talk about that. Oh. <laughs> Just be public for you know for the average kind of right. potential student kind of level of consumption that is normally not what the system is teaching indoors when you're actually talking about it. Okay. Depends on the system, but normally not. But, but you know, I've been in Tai Chi for a long time and the bone marrow, particularly the bone marrow and the femurs is as the major storage place. That's the first time I heard it was, yeah. was from seafood. Yeah, well, it's the whole body for the bone marrow. The reason, the point of the femurs is that's the largest amount of bone marrow in the average person's body is in the femurs. Thank you. Yep. This is the most bone. Yeah, they're the, the biggest bones. Um, so I have a uh, an extra question. So I heard a lot of people were, were talking about like the Mingmen and the Dantian and about how it works on a physical level and an energetic level. Um, something that the Chen training, especially at the uh, beginner Lee level stuff, really talks about too is the incorporation of the Kwa. Um, do we have do we have enough room of time to have everyone talk about I would say no. I would say we're too short yeah, for that. Yeah, that's, that's and, the, and the, bigger, the bigger thing is uh, what I'll say to that is that if you think about like the steering wheel and the controlling aspects and all that, that um that that's where that starts to come in as that the quads help you to manipulate that through your body again. If you're mm -hmm. relaxed enough laying down, you don't need those as much. If you're going to physically do things, then you may really want that steering wheel like a lot. I've also and noticed other, there's other aspects, but that's a big part. Both for, and I talked about it there for healing and for fighting both a little bit. Sorry, go ahead. I've noticed also for the health aspects, having, um, being able to open the hips. I've noticed this in particular, like uh, elderly yeah. people. When you're standing elderly, in that have Very of tight hips and yep. uh, very tight back. So being able to open that helps that circulation and even you know flexibility back in there. So flexible qua is good for our health in the long run too. Cool. Yeah. So these are, this is gonna be the topic of your uh, teaching at the family gathering. We're very much looking forward to that. And if you at home are going, oh man, I wanna know more about that and see what kind of things they're getting into and how they're getting into it. You need to come to the Clear Tai Chi International Family Gathering. That is this year, it is June 3rd, 4th, and 5th. And it is a yearly event, but the classes next year will not be the same as the classes this year. They will be different classes. So if you want this year's classes, go to TaiChiGathering.com, sign up, and come out. It's going to be a great time. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're all looking forward to it. Um, looking forward to seeing everybody live and in person again and having people join us from far and wide, people we've seen before, people we've never seen before. It's going to be a great event. Um, you know, it's going to be a three-day Tai Chi party. So come out and join us, TaiChiGathering.com. Um, get, get on that. Hotels and space are limited. So, uh, so if, you, if you want to come, um, check it out right away and sign up as soon as you can, and we would love to see you there. Cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good discussion, Jared. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Take care.